So the first mini lesson is on collecting and presenting data. So the first thing to be aware of with data is that there are two types of data. There is primary data, which is data that you would collect um, from first-hand sources. For example, if you were doing a survey or an interview, that would be primary data. Then there's secondary data in which you are using data that has already been collected through primary sources. So it's basically you find it on the internet or from other places. And for the virus PBL, that is the type of data that we will be using. How do you go about presenting your data? The first thing that's really important is that you make sure that you find good websites and good sources for your data. The second thing is make sure that you're collecting data that will support your ideas and your strategic plan for this PBL. You will need to be presenting your data in a table and also presenting it in a graph. And you'll need to make sure that you're prepared to explain the data, what it means, and how it connects to your overall strategic plan. When you are presenting data in a table, Basically, tables present numeric, numerical data in a really easy to read format. The purpose is to communicate your information and allow people to make comparisons. Your table should include a brief title. You should label all columns and rows and make sure that you include sources for your data. Here are some examples of couple of tables that I found. Um, this person on Twitter is doing a fantastic job of um, doing a lot of um, research and sources of different COVID data out there. And so here's a couple examples of some tables. Now when you present your data in a graph, you really want to think about the purpose and what type of graph you want to use. Each type of graph has a different purpose and there's a different reason why you would choose one graph over another. You also want to decide whether you want to graph them by hand or using technology, and there will be resources available to you that show you how to graph using technology. That would be my recommendation. What are some of the reasons why we would want to include graphs? Well, graphs help us to make sense of the data, and they present it in a really easy to read visual way. They help to analyze, interpret, and make conclusions. Remember, the goal is to turn data information and turn that information into insight, which you can use to support your overall claims and strategic plan. I will be including a video on MyHSC about the different types of graphs and why you might choose one over another. So feel free to watch that video for more information. It's also going to be in the slideshow, um, so you can just watch it embedded in the slideshow. Really simply, bar graphs, can be single or double, and really they're used to depict categorical data. A circle graph is used to compare parts to the whole. So this, for example, is a graph of looking at the distributions of cases of COVID around the world. And right away, clearly you can see that the United States, India, Brazil, they're some of the countries that are having the most challenging um, time with COVID. A line graph you would use to show change over time. So this is one that I took of COVID data in Ontario and just depicting over time the number of cases. Histogram shows the frequency of data divided into intervals. So this is a histogram looking at the average incubation period from when you've been exposed and then the number of cases. So it looks here based on what you can see that around five days incubation, so five days after you've been exposed, is typically when you start to see um, a positive case. Finally, a scatter plot can be used to show a relationship between two variables, and you will have to include at least one scatter plot in your overall presentation. This particular one looks at population density and incidence of COVID, and this is in uh, an area of India. What are some things that you want to make sure that you include in a graph? Make sure you have a title, make sure your vertical axis is labeled and has a scale, make sure your horizontal axis is labeled and has a scale, and make sure you include a source of where the data came from. 
Also, with your scale, be very careful. Your scale must be consistent. So if you go up by five, you have to keep going up by five. If you go up by two, you have to keep going up by two. Your horizontal axis and your vertical axis can have different scales and often will have different scales, but they must still be consistent. You also have to watch where you start your scale and that can lead to some errors with graphs. So just be careful with that and ask your teacher for help if you need it. Remember, including graphs and data will help you to reinforce and support your claims.